In quantitative modeling, the physical state of a system is often abstracted as a vector. The dynamics of the physical system are then described as changes to the vector with time. Operators are mathematical objects that produce this change. Think of them like functions in the world of vectors. For a given vector v, the operator a hat spits back out another vector a v. In this video, we will later see that a set of basis vectors provides a concrete way to represent the behavior of linear operators in terms of a matrix of numbers. Given a vector v, we can specify a second vector that differs from v, for example, in length, and differs from v, for example, in direction. A rule for spitting out a new, potentially modified vector given an initial vector v is called an operator and denoted with a caret or a hat. For example, we will call the blue vector here a hat on vector v. It is the result of doing a hat to v. Given a vector, an operator outputs a vector possibly scaled and or rotated. We notate this by saying that the operator A takes in stuff from vector space V and spits out corresponding stuff in vector space V. Notice the similarity to the idea of a function. A function associates objects from a domain with objects in a codomain, sometimes in terms of elementary arithmetic operations. F takes big X to big Y. Consider operators with two special properties. Here, a hat has a scaling property. Pre-stretching the vector v by a scale factor alpha before applying the operator a has the same effect as stretching a hat v afterward by the same factor. The scale factor can be applied either before or after the operator a, with identical results in both cases. A hat also has a vector addition property. Here is the resultant of adding vectors v and w. The pink arrow below is the output of applying a hat to the resultant. We can also sketch the consequence of applying a hat to v alone. And we can illustrate the rotation and scaling associated with applying a hat to vector w alone. The operator A has the special property here that applying A hat to V and W individually and then vectorially adding the individual results produces the same final output as adding V and W and then applying A hat to the resultant V plus W. Vector addition can be performed either before or after application of operator A with the same result in both cases. An operator that satisfies both the scaling property on the left and the addition property on the right satisfies the equation a hat on quantity alpha v plus beta w equals alpha a hat v plus beta a hat w. Please verify this equation using the scaling and addition properties. If the operator a satisfies this equation for every pair of vectors v and w in a vector space of interest, we say that the operator is a linear operator. We want to express the behavior of a linear operator using the language of a basis set and a coordinate grid. Purple V prime denotes the result of applying A hat to magenta V. We can use the basis set B1 and B2 to establish a coordinate grid for describing both vectors. Vector v is specified using weighting coefficients or coordinates v1 and v2, while vector v prime is represented using weighting coefficients v prime 1 and v prime 2. Explicitly substitute in place of v its description in terms of the basis set. Because a is a linear operator, we can apply a to both parts of this sum and move it in through the scalar multiplying factors. The result of applying A to the yellow basis vector B1 can itself be expressed in terms of a yellow part and an orange part. The quantity in the first set of square brackets is A hat B1, expressed in terms of a B1 part and a B2 part, with coefficients written A hat B1 sub 1 and A hat B1 sub 2. Similarly, the quantity in the second set of square brackets is A hat B2, expressed in terms of yellow and orange pieces. Replace the cumbersome notation a hat b2 sub 1 with blackboard bold a12. 
the preceding line can be expressed more compactly. Notice that the yellow basis vector b1 and the orange basis vector b2 both appear twice, once each in the first set of square brackets and once each in the second set of square brackets. Rearrange to factor out the basis vectors. Re-express the purple vector v prime in terms of its yellow b1 and orange b2 pieces. We have expressed the purple vector v prime on the left-hand side of the equation. We have expressed the output of applying a hat to magenta vector v on the right-hand side of the equation, and both sides are expressed in terms of a yellow b1 part and an orange b2 part. Identify the corresponding weighting coefficients with each other. The weighting coefficient v prime 1 on the left-hand side equals a11 v1 plus a12 v2 on the right-hand side, and v prime 2 equals a21 v1 plus a22 v2. It is customary to format notation to isolate visually numbers associated with the purple vector v prime, numbers associated with the operator a, and numbers associated with the magenta vector v. We write the coefficients of the original vector v1 and v2 in a bracketed vertical column to the right, remove the two addition signs, and in this way leave extra white space that makes it easy to focus visually on the elements of the square list of numbers a11, a12, a21, and a22. This list is called a matrix. If you are not familiar or are no longer familiar with matrix notation, Please follow the red pointers with your fingers to reinforce kinesthetically that the square bracketed notation means the addition written out explicitly in the system of equations directly above. Visually rotate the coefficients, also called components of the magenta vector v, so that they touch with a11 and a12 respectively. Multiply the numbers that are touching and then visualize adding the results by dragging your fingers horizontally toward the medial axis of the matrix. The arrow diagram to the left and the vector expression at the top of the page, namely purple v prime equals a hat magenta v, describe the action of the operator a in an abstract way. This action can be expressed more concretely as a system of equations that specifies a relationship between weighting coefficients, and this system of equations is customarily notated in matrix notation, with the appropriate addition signs implied. We say that we are multiplying the matrix for A against the column vector representing magenta V. Matrix notation is a representation of the behavior of operator A in relation to a particular basis, and here that basis set consists of yellow basis vector B1 and orange basis vector B2. If you have a linear operator and a basis set, you can represent the operator using this kind of matrix notation. You can also easily check that if you have a square matrix like this, it acts linearly on column vectors and thus represents not just an operator, but a linear operator. The matrix representation of operator A depends on which basis set, meaning coordinate grid, you use to describe the vectors purple V prime and magenta V. And thus the matrix representation for A is a mixed presentation of features fundamentally belonging to the operator A of interest, as well as of accidental properties of the particular basis set that happens to be providing your coordinate grid. Other basis sets and thus other coordinate grids can also be used, generating their own square matrix representations of the operator A. While a matrix representation of the operator A affords the benefit of expressing the action of A in terms of simple multiplication and addition, one should guard against thinking that all numerical patterns in the list of numbers A11, A12, A21, and A22 really belong to the operator A. Some features might in fact merely be accidental consequences of the particular basis set being used. We say that the vector purple v prime is represented by the column vector v prime 1 v prime 2. The word representation is notated by the arrow pointing from the vector v prime to the column vector. Likewise, we say that magenta vector v is represented by the column vector v1 v2. We say that the operator A is represented by the square matrix A. All of these representations are sensitive to the basis set chosen. 
Let's use matrices to help us represent the combined actions of more than one operator on a vector. This is a fast outline you may wish to review this slide slowly at a later time. Take a magenta vector v and obtain purple vector v prime by applying a hat. Now take purple vector v prime and get yet a third vector, blue v double prime, by applying a second operator, b hat. Suppose that a basis set and thus coordinate grid have been chosen so that we can represent v double prime, meaning b hat on v prime in matrix notation. Application of b hat to purple vector v prime can be represented by placing the square list of numbers b11, b12, b21, b22 next to the vertical column vector whose elements are the components of purple v prime. And since purple v prime is the result of applying a hat to magenta v, the numbers in the column vector for purple v prime include both pieces of the matrix representation of a and the column vector representation of magenta v. Touch your fingers to the upper and lower numbers in the column vector representation of purple v. Use your fingers to rotate visually the column vector and hit your fingers against the first row of the square matrix representation of operator b to obtain the first row of this new expression. Do likewise to obtain the second row. Pause the video to do this as many times as desired. The components v1 and v2 both appear twice in each row, once in each set of parentheses. Rearrange terms to pull these coefficients out as common factors. Use your fingers to touch the elements of the column vector v1, v2 in the latest expression and then visually rotate this column to verify that this most recent expression is equivalent to the previous one above. This is one way to represent b hat applied to a hat applied to magenta v. Another way to format the same idea is to write out, in sequence, a square matrix for B visually separate from a square matrix representing A visually separate from a column vector for magenta V. Both this line and the previous have the column vector V1, V2 isolated toward the right. Comparison between both lines reveals that the western column of the matrix for A and the northern row for the matrix for B supply the numbers for the northwest number in the big matrix representing the combined result of operators A then B. The western column of matrix A and the southern row of matrix B correspond to the southwest corner of the matrix of A then B. The eastern column of matrix A and the northern row of matrix B give us the northeastern corner, and the eastern column of matrix A and the southern row of matrix B give us the southeastern corner. Thus, familiar rules for matrix multiplication fall out naturally from thinking about the representation of the action of an operator A followed by the action of an operator B. Now that we have introduced vectors, vector spaces, representations, and operators, we can, in the next video, efficiently and visually think about the eigenvector eigenvalue analysis that provides the solution for our original motivating case study.